Hi everyone, welcome to Ask an Armorer. My name's Kia and today I'll be going through the basic circuitry of a foil. If you're already aware of this or just want to go see repairs, you can go ahead and jump to those videos directly. I always find having this background information is really helpful though for doing diagnostics. Especially on some of the weirder issues that might not show up on a standard checklist of what to look for. I can use this basic knowledge to see what the circuit is doing and based on what I know it should be doing, work it back from there to pinpoint where the actual is that's causing the problem. I'm also assuming for this video that you've already isolated the problem to your foil and that it isn't hiding somewhere else like your body cord. I've got another video that shows you how to quickly determine what piece of equipment is faulty when you're on piste, just so you can get it exchanged and go back for repairs later. If you've never done anything electrical before, don't worry, what you need to know isn't hugely complicated. A very basic circuit is a circle. It's off when the circle is broken and the flow of electrons is interrupted, and it's on when the circle is continuous. Things can be added into the circle to create opportunities to break or complete it, such as switches, which are represented here, or to take advantages of the energy from the electrons that are flowing when it's complete, like a light. As you can see here, our open circuit has a, has a light that is off, and our closed one has energy all the way through it, and therefore the light is on. In this very simple system, there are two possible outcomes. Foil has one more level of this in order to have the three outcomes we see, no light, white light, and a colored light. To achieve this, there must actually be two circles, and depending on which circle is complete, or if neither is complete, the scoring machine will show us those different outcomes. So in foil, there's only one wire, and the blade itself acts as the second wire. The signal originates in the scoring machine, travels through the reel and the body cord to the connector, down the wire, through the tip, back up the blade, where it can then return via a second path in the connector, body cord, and reel to the machine. This is the first circle and will give us the first two outcomes, either the no light or the white light. Because the blade itself acts as part of the wiring circuit, we need to tape the tip of the foil to a certain distance so it won't ground out against your opponent's lame if it contacts the blade. This is also why it's important to use the correct connector for foil and not to substitute a saber one even though it physically fits. I have videos explaining about more about both of those in much greater detail that I'll link below for those curious. The second circle is formed by adding in your opponent's lame and their system, and then the signal can move from the scoring machine, the reel, your body cord and foil, to their lame back through their body cord, reel, and scoring machine. The scoring machine is then able to determine, based on which direction the signal is moving, which fencer scored a valid hit. Now, foil is a bit of an interesting system in that it actually starts in the closed mode, unlike most basic circuits that start open. This means the foil system's default is on and that there is a current flowing through the system. When you depress the tip of the foil, you introduce a change to the system. The white light you get is the acknowledgement that something happened, but nothing meaningful has changed, meaning you didn't hit anything that the system will recognize as valid target. A colored light means you've hit your target, the conductive material of your opponent's lame. As we've discussed before, hitting this conductive material opens up a second circuit which the scoring machine can reinterpret and give you the color light indicating the correct target has been hit. All of this is interpreted by the scoring machine or the test box and the various outputs display what the machine is seeing. Before you plug into the machine, it yells at you because it's looking for an input that it's just not getting. Plugging in a functional set of equipment then gives the machine the input that it's looking for and turns off the alarm, indicating that everything is set and it's ready to go. Now I hear you asking me about the metal piece used at many competitions. Those can still be hit without turning on any lights, but how does this work if that still introduces a change to the system? Well, that's the beauty of them being metal and therefore groundable. These can be separately wired into the scoring machine so that it is again something that the machine recognizes and is input that it can disregard. It can basically can count them as the same as the foil's base state and just not recognize that anything has happened. But 
don't go hitting the metal pieces as much as you can because it isn't good for them and will make armorers like myself cringe. So if everything is working properly in your foil, we'll only see the colored light, the white light, or no light as the three possible outlets, and we should only see them when expected. If these outputs start deviating from what we expect, we know that there's now an issue and we can start diving into the diagnostics. I'll have a few videos on how to diagnose your foil in much greater detail, so I won't go too much into it here, but here's a few examples of how we can use this knowledge. As one example, we know that we're only supposed to see a white light when you hit something off target. So if you start seeing a white light when you haven't hit off target or just randomly, you know that somehow the system thinks that the circuit is being opened and that a hit is being made without actual contact happening. So you can start looking for places in the circuit that might be causing this issue. Conversely, if your foil isn't giving any lights at all, we know it's stuck in its base state. So we go, can go look for places where the circuit is being constantly kept closed. So that's a very high level overview of how a foil works. I've linked the FIE manual down below for those who want to do a deeper dive into the full specs of the technical details of how a foil is supposed to work. But this is the level that I typically find I use in everyday armory, and it's what I teach when I am starting to introduce somebody to the basics of foil. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have any questions, comments, or other topics you'd like me to cover, let me know down below. See you in the next one, bye!